Hey guys, today I thought I'd do a video on uh, showing how to replace a coil or magneto on a small engine. Now this is an 11 horse Briggs I'm using for an example. It's model 252707. But it's going to be similar on just about any make or model of a small engine. Because it's, the, all the coils work pretty much the same with all of these that uh, work off the magnet on the flywheel. Uh, it's actually a magneto, but like I said a minute ago, I always call it a coil. Uh, it's also referred to as an armature too. One of them parts has got a lot of names for it. <laughs> but the uh, first thing you got to do, do this with any engine, is to remove the flywheel cover. And to do that, you get two bolts here, one here, there should be one over here too. Yeah, right there. You got four bolts to hold this on. Like I said, this is an 11 horse bridge, but it's going to be the same with just about any of them. So I'm going to go ahead and get these four bolts loose and we'll take the cover off. Okay, I got all four bolts out. The flywheel cover just comes off like this. This is your flywheel here. You see the fins on it. This is your coil right here. Or magneto, whatever you want to call it. And this is the uh, newer style Magnetron electronic ignition. This motor does not have points and condenser underneath the flywheel. Uh, easy way to tell what yours is. It'll be a wire coming out of here and be going underneath the flywheel. If you got a wire coming off the coil going under the flywheel, it's got points and condenser. You can also tell by the way the coil itself is made if you're used to working on them. I don't have a regular coil to show you right off hand here. On this type, all you got to do is unhook a wire here. I'll show you in a second. If your motor's got the points and condenser, you either have to uh, take the flywheel off to get to the wire or if you got enough slack in the wire, you could just cut the wire and re-splice the wire and tape it up real good. And probably solder it and you'd be good to go. Uh, it'd be up to you how you want to do that. Because pulling the flywheel is a pain unless you got the proper tools. It's uh, something I try to avoid as much as possible. I had one engine, it happened to be 11 horse too, and the flywheel was literally stuck on it. And I just happened to have a magnetron coil handy, so I just left the points condenser alone and put that on there it's been fine ever since so <laughs> sometimes you best to get around something like that if you can okay getting back to the purpose of the video you want to unhook your spark plug wire and let me show you this wire on this side see this wire right here it's the kill wire your shut off wire you just unhook it from the coil Probably get needle nose on it there and pull it off like that. It just clips on there. We'll look at the coil itself here in a minute. You see this little little tab right here? That's your connector that, that was on. And these coils, like I said, they work off the magnet on the flywheel. The magnet's right here. This is your magnet right here. You can see a pretty strong magnet. So what I recommend doing is getting the magnet, turn the flywheel, so the magnet's away from this. That'll make the coil a little easier to come off. So now that you got the wire unhooked and the spark plug wire unhooked, the coil is ready to come off. And you got these two bolts right here that hold the coil on. And they're also your adjustment. You'll have to reset the gap here after we get the coil back on it. Now, I'm not replacing the coil on this, and uh, I'll go ahead and share a couple tips with you that uh, just to verify that you need a new coil. Uh, first of all, if you have an engine without spark, try and do spark plug first. If you still don't have spark, unhook this wire, your shut off wire, check for spark. If you got spark then, and you got a bad ignition switch, or your wire is shorted out somewhere to the to the frame somewhere and you have to trace that wire all the way back to where it goes and find the problem make sure that your magnet is still good on the flywheel because they can lose your charge if your engine has a point to condenser it's part of the points needing sanding or filed or you need a new point and condenser in there that usually takes care of it and if you have the magnetron like this and you try a new plug and the unhooked wire and there's still no spark there's one more possibility it could be it's often overlooked this is besides uh, uh, the gap being set wrong 
or excessive amount of rust on the flywheel or the coil. If you just have a little bit of surface rust, it will not affect the spark on the engine because the magnetic field will go right through the rust. It's not affecting it. Only time rust is an issue if it's really, really built up on there and uh, you're making the gap bigger because of the rust. A lot of people will disagree with me when I say that. I know. I just thought I'd share you that with you. My theory, anyway. Anyway, if all that checks out and you still don't have a spark, uh, you got one more possibility. Let me get these two bolts out here. Just take these all the way out for right now. And I'm not actually replacing this coil. This coil's still good. I'm just uh, doing this as a demonstration to show you all how to do it. Another, the other problem I'm talking about to be causing no spark is rust built up right here with contacts to block and these studs here. You can see here. Or since this is aluminum, it could be oxidized or corroded. You need to clean these off. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway on this. Since this motor had good spark, but while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to keep it from uh, causing a problem. And I'll show you how to do it. I know this ain't the best angle, but I'll try to show you as good as I can. Just run a flat file across both of these. You can see them starting to shine already. This is something I didn't even know about until a couple years ago. I mean, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense, but it's just something that's overlooked all the time. And you want to do the same thing on this. You could use a wire brush too if you want. I just got, the, got a file here. I'm gonna see how it does. Well, I got it cleaned off about as good as it needs to be. You can see there. This is a better look at the terminal right here where the shutoff wire hooks on there. Now we'll get ready to put it back on and go ahead and stick the bolts in it, but don't tighten them up yet. We got to adjust the gap on here. And it's about the same with any small engine. But I'll look up the specs here just to be sure I'm telling you right. I can't remember everything. But if you don't have a feeler gauge, you need a feeler gauge, uh, you can get by with using a business card. The thickness of a business card, just put that underneath there, tighten it down on it, then tighten your screws and pull the card out, and you got it set good enough. It's another one of them things that's not real, real critical. And for model 25, it's 10 to 14 thousand, so I'll set it at 10 thousand. Anytime you get a clearance like that set for 10 to 14 thousand, or any, or even a valve clearance for like 5 to 7 or uh, 9 to 11 or whatever it is, always set up everything for the smaller tolerance if possible. Uh, that just keeps it to going back out of spec. I'm going to do this a different way. I ain't never done it before. I'm going to use two filler gauges. If you just have one, put it in there, tighten the screw, hold it down, and come over the other side, tighten it, and double check it. Most of the time, you'll get it right the first try. I'm just going to try to save a little bit of time here on the video and use two. So get it on there, get two of them set, and get in there and tighten it up. I'm putting pretty good tension on that too to keep it from slipping. You don't want to get these super tight because they will strip out they're just going into aluminum. And pull out your feeler gauge or gauges in this case, and you're good to go. Also, don't forget to hook up your shutoff wire here. I know I'm probably blocking you, but I can't really do it any other way here. I'll just hook up on here like this. And after you get your shutoff wire, your spark plug wire hooked up, you're good to go. And while you're doing this, you might want to pull your spark plug out and clean it and regap it or replace it if you want to. That way you're doing a complete ignition system tune-up. A complete tune-up would be doing, be setting this gap here, cleaning your, replacing your plug, replacing the air filter, and doing an oil change. That'd be pretty much a complete tune-up. Unless it has a pointy condenser, then you'd be replacing that as well. But uh, that's about it. I'm going to get the flywheel cover back on, then we'll crank the motor over and make sure it's got spark.
thing's got real good spark. Let me check the shut off wire and make sure it's working. Well guys, everything works on it, so that's, this motor is good to go now. So if you got any questions on the ignition system, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.